Example two says complete the entries in the creditors journal from the transactions below that have taken place for Modus Stores April 2006. Modus Stores sell food and beverages. Okay, so you first have to go and give your CJ a heading. It's the creditors journal of Modus Stores for April 2006. And because April is the fourth month of the year, it's CJ number four. Then we can look at our transactions. It says on the first, we purchase frozen veggies from Good Food Bites on account. Now that indicates that this is a CJ transaction for 7,000 Rand. We receive their invoice number 90, but we renumber it to number 25. Now remember something that's special about the CJ is that we always use renumbered invoices. So the document number will not be the 90 that we got from them. It will be our renumbered number 25. It's on the first. The creditor's name is Good Food Bites. The creditor's number was given to you as creditor's number one and this folio column will be used for the creditor's number. Every value in the CJ must go to the creditor's control column and to somewhere else, very similar to the CPJ. And because we purchased frozen veggies and we've got a food store, it must also go to trading inventory. Then the next transaction was on the 4th. It said we receive an invoice. These words indicate that it's a CJ transaction. For repairs to the storeroom for 3,000 Rand from Ron's Repairs, creditor number 2. Their invoice number is 60, but we won't use that. We will remember to renumber the invoice to number 26. It's on the 4th, Ron's Repairs. Creditor number two, the value must go to creditor's control and it was for repairs, but there's no repairs column. So we take it to sundry accounts, to the repairs account and remember to use this folio column to reference the general ledger. Okay, so if you look at your ledger on the next page, you will see repairs is nominal account number two. Then on the sixth, it says buy stationery from RB stationers creditor number three, for office use and receive their invoice. Okay, so this will indicate it's a CJ transaction because we're receiving an invoice. The invoice is for 250 Rand and the account is to be paid within 30 days. We will renumber the invoice to number 27. It's on the six. The creditor's name is RB Stationers. Creditor number three, the value was 250 Rand and it was for stationery. Then on the 11th, we purchase cases of cool drink on account. So on account indicates it's a CJ transaction. Cases of cool drink for a store that sells food and beverages will be trading inventory. We received an invoice number 800, but we won't use that number. We will use a renumbered number from Rebel Stores, creditor number four for 2,400 Rand. So it's invoice number 28 on the 11th from Rebel Stores, creditor number four. 2,400 Rand must go to creditors control and it's trading inventory. Then on the 12th, we receive an invoice. So these words indicate it's a CJ transaction from LL Traders C5 for stationery. The amount is 600 Rand and their invoice number is 120. Once again, we use our own invoice number 29. On the 12th, LL Traders, creditor number 5, 600 Rand and it was for stationery. And then lastly, on the 19th, we buy perishables. That's just food that has a sell by date because it can become um, fraught. On account, on account means that it's a CJ transaction from the supply house, creditor number six for 1,500 Rand, receive their invoice number 50, but we'll renumber it to number 30. On the 19th, the supply house, creditor number six, 1,500 Rand, perishables will be trading inventory for a company that sells food and beverages. Then, 
Rene remember to total your columns. Creditors control has a total of 14,750. Trading inventory is 10,900. Stationery, 850. Sundry accounts, 3,000. And if you add these three columns together, you will see that it adds up to the total of the creditors control column because every value went to creditors control and to one of these columns. And then remember to reference your general ledger for the columns just below the column total. If you look at your ledger on the next page, then creditors control is balance sheet account number one, trading inventory is balance sheet account number two, and stationery is nominal account number one. Now, before you can start posting the creditors journal to the general ledger, I want you to do what we've been doing every single time when we have a general ledger. I want you to go through every account and classify it next to the account's name in brackets and make the plus and minus signs based on dead and click. Okay, so creditors control is a liability account and liabilities increase on the credit side because the L is the L of click. And this is very important and I want you to remember this because we haven't worked with creditors control in the past. Then the next account, trading inventory, is an assets and that A is the A of dead. So your assets increase on the debit side, decrease on the credit side. Then stationary is an owner's equity expense account and the E for expense is the E of debt, so it increases on the debit side, decreases on the credit side, and the same thing with repairs, it's also an owner's equity expense, so it increases on the debit side, decreases on the credit side. Now, if you look at your creditors journal, and you want to know what the posting rule is, as it's very, very similar to the CPJ, because we said that this total, the total of your creditors control column, the 14,750, is equal to the sum of all of the other columns added together. So if you say 3,000 plus 850 plus 10,900, you get the 14,750. So creditors control is your main column. And in this case, your main column is the liability that will increase because we are buying more and more and more and more on accounts without actually paying. So we owe more money. And therefore, this 14,750 Rand will go to the side where creditors control increase, the credit side. And because every credit in accounting needs a debit, all of the other values from the entire CJ will be debited. Because if you add the totals together of all of the other values, it gives you this value that will go to the credit side. So we've got one big credit that goes to creditors control and all of the other goes to the debit side. And in all of the other accounts, we write creditors control because it refers back to that big credit in creditors control. So let's post creditors control first. On the credit side of creditors control, you will write the month and the year. It's April 2006. The date will be the 30th because it's a column total and 30 um, is the last day in April. The details will be similar to the details in bank from the CPJ. We will say total purchases. We can't say total payments because we haven't paid yet, but we have purchased many different types of things. The journal in this case that goes to the folio column is the CJ and the value was 14,750 Rand. Then let's go and post the trading inventory value to the debit side of trading inventory. Once again, you say April 2006 the 30th because it's a column total and the contra account will be creditors control. Remember we said in all of the other accounts we will write creditors control because they all add up to that total on the credit side of creditors control. The journal is the CJ, the value is 10,900 Rand. 
The next column is the stationary column, which will also go to the debit side of stationary, and you will also say creditors control. So in stationary, the year and the month is still April 2006. It's a column total that's posted on the 30th. You write creditors control in the CJ, 850 Rand. And then lastly, we haven't posted this value to repairs yet. Usually I start with sundry accounts, but now I've just started with the columns to teach you the posting rule. But this 3,000 Rand, but this 3,000 Rand must go to repairs. And because it's in sundry accounts, it will have to go on the date when the transaction took place, the 4th. But it will still go to the debit side and it will still write creditors control. So it's just the date that's a bit different. Okay, so in repairs, you will start by saying April 2006, but now it's the 4th, not the 30th. Creditors control the CJ 3000 Rand. And if you go and look at your ledger on the debit side, and you take this 3,000 Rand plus the 850 Rand plus the 10,900 Rand that all say creditors control, you will see it adds up to that value on the other side, the credit side, in creditors control, the 14,750 Rand.